And that's good to go. All right, Jimmy, over to you. All right. Uh, thank you, Raul. And uh, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Jimmy Phillip, and I'm the Deputy uh, Head Academics for Department of Mechanical Engineering. And we have Lisa, uh, one of our students. Uh, she's kindly agreed to talk to you also, give our students perspective towards the end. So the plan is to give you a presentation on mechanical uh, mechatronics degrees and industrial engineering, which and mechanical includes aerospace uh, for, the, for the next uh, 20, 25 minutes or so. And then Lisa and I could take some questions from you. All right, so that's the plan. Um, all right, uh, Raul has already spoken to you about joining the engineering and IT community is an excellent place for you to be there uh, to get in touch uh, with them uh, for the latest news. And I saw this barbecue, which I think is always, always a nice thing, nice touch. All right, uh, so I thought I would give you a brief overview of the Department of Mechanical Engineering and uh, what it does. What you see here is the Mechanical Engineering Student Society, which is a very active group. Uh, they organize uh, uh, barbecues, uh, um, uh, talks in the pub uh, to many different activities. And if you are interested, even though you are at BSc level, this is a great opportunity uh, to look at what mechanical engineers would do. Uh, they also have very specific uh, clubs like MUR, Melbourne University Racing. They build a race car uh, uh, from literally from scratch. Nowadays, it's an electric, uh, driven by electric motor. And uh, many of our departmental uh, academics help them in, in, in making them. So there are close to 20 students working in teams, designing different parts of the race car, and they actually have a driver and they go and represent the university and they have to race, make sure they're not driving well. And so they design the car for the specific uh, person in their team. So depending on the weight and the height and everything, very exciting. And there is another, uh, Society called Aerospace Rocket Engineering Society. I'm planning to meet them actually. We have a get together at the pub today at four o'clock. Uh, I don't know how many of you would know about this thing, but they have a very, a very active club, uh, does uh, other take part in competitions also. All right, just to give you a brief overview of the masters offered. So if you're doing a three year BSc, you go to a masters for two years typically. So the department offers masters in mechanical engineering. So you do two years, you get a mechanical engineering master's. You can also get a master's in mechatronics engineering and also a master's in industrial engineering. So there are three different masters. This, these two are the most prominent one, mechatronics and mechanical. And industrial is a, a recent one, which you have recently added uh, last year or so. And uh, the handbook uh, uh, links are here and these are very good places to see the details. But I thought I'll give you a little more. So you can simply get a master's in mechanical, it's quite broad based. However, depending on the final year, that is the last year, uh, you, if you take very specific four subjects, you can get a specialization. For example, you can get a specialization in aerospace, manufacturing materials or business. So you could get a master's in mechanical engineering with specialization in aerospace, which comes onto your transcript. And of course, as you might, uh, uh, recognize the aerospace and rocket engineering society is mostly done by these aerospace students and they have difference also. Mechatronics also, there is a, a specific specialization on manufacturing if you do those, those special subjects. Industrial engineering, there are no specialization because it is a very recent uh, addition to our masters, but this is a very exciting opportunity. In the next couple of slides, I'm gonna talk, be talking about all these three different masters briefly, and hopefully you'll have questions which I can answer later. So what is uh, mechanical engineering? So typically mechanical engineers uh, design, construct, operate machines, robots, or manufacturing equipment. When I was doing mechanical, for example, um, uh, 20 plus years ago, 25 years ago or so, uh, I went into it because it is one of the most broad engineering. It goes on, for, it incorporates electrical, mechanical, lots of things actually, and it combines them together. So it's a, so if I didn't know anything, I would just pick mechanical because it is quite broad. So here it says designing uh, product developments, such as mobile phones, gaming consoles, cars, wind turbines, 
and plenty of other things. Okay, so this is one of our ex star students, who's uh, James, who is um, currently working as a design engineer in Boeing Aero Australia. So this is one example of what mechanical engineers work. I used to work with when I did finish my mechanical engineering. Used to work with General Electric company for a few years before I moved on to do other things. So you look, it's it's very broad. Okay, so so. It, and, and it's very, it's excellent to keep an open mind when you're doing mechanical because you have a lot of options available in there. What is mechatronics specifically? In mechatronics, you focus more, uh, it's, a, it's an interface between electronics or electrical and mechanical and software engineering, okay? So you combine all these together because nowadays you can see that uh, uh, traditional mechanical systems, let's say a car, but today, if you don't know electronics, a car is useless because everything is controlled by electrons. The amount of sensors and control systems which goes into a simple car is mind boggling, okay? And most of the recent advances are happening in mechatronics uh, areas. So it's very important. And you use com computer-based systems, drones, robots. And in all these cases, you typically apply your maths and programming skills. Uh, so mechanical versus mechatronics, it's a, a well, it's an interesting slide. Mechatronics, as its picture shows, combines different aspects of electronics plus typical mechanical systems. Mechanical, on the other hand, is quite broad. You need, still need to know electronics if you're doing mechanical. You cannot get away with it. And we do have electronic subjects, but the emphasis is not only on electronics. You have emphasis on thermodynamics, propulsion, fluid dynamics dynamics, control, manufacturing, design. So you can see this covers a broad base. Okay, so it's quite a broad engineering. Like if you go in working, so it's easiest to get into uh, as a mechanical, uh, simply because you have learned different uh, skill set as you're doing your degree. Uh, what is industrial, which is less better known? So these are the three different engineer masters I said. Now, this is a very recent addition to our masters, but it's a very old engineering. What industrial engineering typically does is to figuring out how to make or do things better, okay? So they are all about improving efficiency and less waste and money. And you can imagine this is going to become only more and more important as we go because of climate change to changes uh, in the environment. Uh, this engineering is going to become uh, quite useful for, for our day-to-day -day living, in fact. So, uh, and, and that's what you spend most of your time. So this is a two-year degree. Uh, degree. Uh, uh, this is an example of uh, one of our students, Shruti Pal. Um, uh, she's working as a trainee with uh, one of the breweries. Uh, this is Carlton Brewery. AB is a, AB in Bevy is a large a Belgian company which does a brewery and she, she's doing uh, work there. Uh, typically, industry and employability, what do we do? Uh, within your master's program, you have different subjects which and, and, in, and courses which improve your chances of being employable. For example, there is an internship course available, uh, 10 to 15 weeks professional work, and you can get credits for that. Uh, you have connection with industry, you have industry projects. There is a subject called creating innovative engineers where you directly deal with industry problems. And there are many different workshops and uh, employability uh, career events. And of course, there are plenty of clubs and societies which connect you with industry. And finally, your capstone project. This is in year five, where you do a large project. It could typically with industry, mostly with industry or could be otherwise also. And then you have an exhibition where you present it in a booth, uh, typically in, in the, in the lawns here and industries would come and look at you and uh, you can get absorbed. Or you, if you're doing a project with industry, uh, you work with them for six months to a year and you get credits and at the end you get credits and they would know how good you are and you can judge them how good they are and then you get absorbed. So it's very common. So that's about industry and employability. This is typical uh, uh, employment outcomes. Uh, not only we have, you can go work there, there is an opportunity to be an entrepreneur in, in an innovation uh, in Melbourne. So there is something called Melbourne Accelerator Program. And I remember um, um, guiding one of the students. Uh, uh, this student was from biomedical, I think. 
and they wanted to make a biomedical device, but they needed some fluid mechanics uh, background. Uh, and they were trying to make, and uh, she wanted to put something inside the body to measure the flow of air. So I was discussing with them and they got some awards from Melbourne uh, MAP and they started a small business, I remember. So there are a couple of opportunities, not only just to go within the industry, but if you want to do something creative, something new, there's an opportunity for that, like a startup. Okay, so there are plenty of opportunities in that respect. So some of the companies where mechanical graduates typically work, so these are different companies where students have gone, uh, aeronautics, automobile. So you can see there's a company, there's a large, there's a huge range of com industries and, and companies uh, which they work from in Z, Arup. One of the companies which is not here is, uh, um, uh, is uh, American Bank. So this student was doing um, fluid mechanics and went into uh, banking. And you would wonder why would a bank hire, Bank of America would hire as somebody in fluid mechanics. The interesting bit is that they know how good you are with analysis and MATLAB. And uh, what they need is a skill of analysis and MATLAB, not really banking. Anybody can learn banking if you know, if you're good at analysis. So the student went into American bank. Okay, so that's an unconventional role, but these are typical, more conventional uh, industries, Boeing, Bosch, to all the way to different, uh, uh, different consulting firms. Uh, the different types of jobs, job names keep changing. So these are some of those uh, uh, examples here, industries and, and student projects, okay, uh, which will help you uh, towards this. This is mechanical graduates. We have some for mechatronics graduates, uh, uh, differences, uh, the subtle differences. However, you can see there are more uh, tuned towards electronics computing and electronics, you can get in, there is a merger between mechanical and electronics that comes in, which is becoming more and more important uh, as we go forward and different health industries get into it. Um, uh, job roles, uh, you can go into software to software engineer to, to traditional mechanical or control systems engineers. Okay, so that's mechatronics graduates. Uh, you have a career opportunities for industrial engineering. We don't have, as I mentioned, there are no direct students who have passed out from here, the first students will pass out uh, this or next year. And these are different industries. And these are the different companies uh, which when we were creating industrial engineering, we were consulting with them. So we have an industry group. Uh, so where people from industry, we meet them every few months and they tell us what they want. And based on their inputs, we create uh, we created this industrial engineering. And these are the companies where we have representatives from Amazon, Asahi, Boeing, BSTG, Ford, IBM. All these places, people are sitting on the board and we talk to them and they want students from us. That's why they're investing their time. And they give us capstone projects. So students do projects there and they can see you and you can see them. So this is a great way to collaborate with the industry also. So, uh, so uh, this, this is typically for industrial engineering and other, other uh, masters too. All right, so coming back actually, so I just want to focus on the mechanical for the next few uh, minutes. So you are a BSc student, let's say, uh, and how do you get into, or a BCom student, how do you get into this masters, okay? So I'm just gonna talk about briefly the core structure of masters in mechanical engineering. Now, so typically you come with, to get into masters of mechanical or mechatronics, you start with bachelor's of design, or mostly most of the students would be doing bachelor's of science and there is a pathway from bachelor's of commerce too. And you get into, you finish your degree and get here. Now, I was told that um, people are interested in what kind of subjects they should take. So I've listed the eight subjects which you would typically do in your undergraduate, that is in your bachelor's. So these are mostly bachelor's subjects, which would give you a, master, a bachelor's with a major in mechanical engineering. So if you did this eight subject, you get a major. I would also suggest uh, if you want to take a different subject, this is a very interesting subject, science research project. So this gives you an opportunity to do a research project during your undergraduate. So this is your, one of your breadth subjects, which you can take and you can work in a lab. So I have had students from BSc working in taking this subject and working in labs so they can know more clearly 
what mechanical engineers do, what kind of labs, what are they doing inside before entering into the masters. So you're still doing your bachelor's, but you get a preview into what master's students would do or, or what the department specific labs are doing. So this is a great project if you want to engage in, okay? So I'm gonna talk a little bit about aerospace. As I said, master's of mechanical, you can get an aerospace specialization and we focus on uh, typical aerospace space skills. For example, I have, my PhD was in, in the faculty of aerospace engineering, although I did my undergraduate in mechanical. So you can imagine mechanical aerospace, they go pretty close to each other. Uh, typical subjects you would take in aerospace electives are fluid dynamics, vibration, propulsion, aerospace dynamics control. You typically, sometimes you visit uh, aerospace industries as a part of the visit. And as I mentioned in the beginning, there is a, a aerospace, uh, the Rocket Society Club, uh, which is quite active. And, and you take part in different uh, uh, um, activities organized by these students. There is uh, many of the students do mechanical with business. Uh, you have a knack for doing business. You just don't want to do the traditional job. You want to combine the business skills. So uh, this is with the School of Business in uh, Faculty of Business at Melbourne. So this is a not a joint degree, but you take subjects which are offered by the School of Business. So these are typical subjects. One, two, three, four, five, and uh, there are six subjects here, and you have to take four subjects out of these four. You get a, then you get a, you pass with a Master's of Mechanical Engineering with specialization in business. You can do manufacturing. Uh, so there are these four subjects. If you take those subjects, you get a specialization. Now, if you're doing a pure Master's of Mechanical, uh, uh, and you don't want to specialize, that's great because that gives you a breadth. You can take any of the subjects. You could take subjects from manufacturing. If you're doing pure mechanical engineering, you can take subjects from anywhere, okay? You don't have to take those four subjects. So you have an opportunity for that also. And if you take these uh, four subjects uh, from these given five subjects, you can get a specialization in materials, for example. So you can see the, the breadth of subject which has been offered and the type of things which you can do when you go to mechanical engineering. Right, in mechatronics, uh, focusing on that. Uh, so it's very similar. Uh, you come typically from bachelor's of science directly, not that so there's no design or commerce here. And you typically would do mechatronics engineering systems major. That's what you get. But what you're doing in your undergraduate is these are the eight subjects which you're doing to get these major. I have indicated in blue here, the extra subjects or different subjects which you take apart from typical mechanical. So you take the usual mechanical subjects, these ones. And of course you would take more computing or electronic analogs and electronic systems uh, to get this major. And of course, then you go to a master's degree, which is two years. Again, I encourage if you are doing this thing, look at this subject, which might be quite use useful as an undergraduate student to get up to see what the master's students would be doing, okay? Uh, and mechatronics also comes with uh, a specialization in manufacturing. Again, if you do those four subjects, you can get special, so you'll be a master's in mechatronics engineering with specialization in manufacturing. So that's an option there too. Okay, so typical 65% uh, average marks, you probably all know all these things. So I'm, I'm gonna leave it here. Uh, I'm not gonna spend time on this entry requirements and applications deadlines, okay? A master in industrial engineering. Well, this is simple because there is, uh, it's different. There is no specialization. However, this is slightly different. You can come into industrial engineering from bachelor's of science, design or biomedicine even. You, the requirement is quite broad. Okay, so you can come, from, come with any bachelor's all the way from biomedical to chemical to civil to, to anything actually really. And then any major can be chosen. And then you do a two years of industrial engineering, simply because in industrial engineering, they teach you really uh, inside the masters, uh, what, uh, how to become an industrial engineer. So you don't, there is very little prerequisites required here, okay? So that's the idea here. Uh, uh, so there is a breadth rule for BCom students, which is more um, uh, nuanced. And I would strongly suggest if you are coming from BCom, um, have a chat with uh, stop one to uh, look at the eligibility. That's the best rather than ex explaining it here, perhaps. 
Um, I might also just jump in to say yeah. there that uh, our team in particular has a lot of experience um, talking about this specific pathway. So um, there'll be some details at the end of the slide to again, you know, be able to book an appointment to chat with us, but we're more than happy to help any uh, BCom students who are interested in this pathway to go through the, I guess, the nitty gritty details. Uh, but thanks for highlighting that there, Jimmy, appreciate it. Excellent, thanks, Ralph. So you know whom to contact uh, uh, now if you're a BCom student. Uh, so fees and funding, uh, well, uh, these are the standard funding for student contribution international students. Uh, and I'll leave it here just as an information here. And actually that's more or less that I have. And we're happy to take uh, questions. Well, I should show you the chat to the team. So perhaps this is what Raul was mentioning, perhaps our future students team, please get in touch with them. Otherwise, uh, that's all from my side and I'm happy to take any questions or Lisa uh, would be happy and, and Raul. Thanks. Um, excellent. Thanks a lot for that, Jimmy. I might just give Lisa a bit of an opportunity to introduce um, maybe just a little brief overview about yourself. I've chatted to Lisa a lot in the past, by the way, and she's awesome to listen to, just so everybody knows. Um, something as well I was just going to say is that if you do have some questions, uh, you can feel free to either, you know, come off mute and ask them, but otherwise you can type them uh, in the chat box there and um, we can answer them that way. Or um, if you really like it, you can message me directly and I'll ask the question on your behalf. Um, I will also have a couple of the questions that were pre-submitted from people that I'll be asking. Uh, so there's that option as well. But anyway, that's enough for me for now. Sorry, Lisa, you can go ahead. Yeah, thanks so much, Rahul. So um, my name is Lisa. I'm first year mechatronics engineering students, um, masters. And well, in my study, I enjoy so much about mechatronics because you get to learn some subjects from mechanical, electrical, and also uh, programming. So if you are, um, if you like some coding and integration of uh, mechanical systems and electrical systems, that um, this course will be the best for you because in the end, you will learn so much of how to create automation by of course, integration of like dynamics, for example, uh, electrical components and some coding. Most of the coding we use Python and it's gonna be so beneficial also if you know Java. And yeah, that's about uh, the fun of the subject. You, you get to know how to create, how to make robots and build some kind of autonomous systems. Um, apart from my, a part of my study, I also um, active in some student clubs, like my, the, uh, the one that mentioned before, Mechanical Engineering Student Society, um, and also ARES. Uh, a part of the ARES, Aerospace Engineering Society, um, there is a student club named Unimap Rover Team, when we actually built a functional rover for the Australian uh, Rover Competition Challenge. And I'm, the, I'm one of the robotic arm team where, where we actually create a functional robotic arm from scratch uh, at TCS, that's Telstar Creator Space. So when you go to the master, it's, there is a lot of student clubs that will give you a lot of opportunity to actually build your own projects, to apply the theory that you learn from, from subject, from your course, to actually build the project from scratch. And it's pretty fun. And uh, you have to approach, uh, I mean, you have to engage yourself and open yourself with those projects in student clubs because they are, they are there for you. Um, and you just have to be active and yeah, uh, be um, engaged and do a lot of projects as it, it is very good for you, um, for your experience as you get a lot of hand-on experience in building your own projects. And probably that's all for me, thank you. Lisa, by the way, did you, you guys, you did the rover team. Did you yes. get any prize? Yes, actually, you got a second, second place. <laughs> That's Australia-wide, was it? Yes, Australia-wide. So we compete with Monash, um, Adelaide, Adelaide, Adelaide Rover team, and Queensland, and also at MIT. And this is actually our first year competing with those universities. So we end up uh, second place. That, that's pretty surprising because we didn't even expect that we actually become top three, but then we, we come up as number two. Very impressive. So Lisa is a star. You can look at it. You can ask if you want to join the Rovers team next March. Rover, team. Yes. You should talk to Lisa. <laughs> um, and I think this actually segues quite nice into a question we gotten um, earlier about employment scope and opportunities and, and sort of, you know, what that looks like. And I think it's 
brilliant to hear, you know, what Lisa's talking about right now, you know, the, an actual project they've done and, and, you know, how that, it doesn't matter. You, I mean, it's great you've got second place, but the fact that you can talk about the application of your studies and stuff in a, in a real life sort of project is super important when you're going into, um, I guess, the engineering workforce and being able to point towards things, um, not just during the interviews, but then when you're doing something, you know, you know that working in a project is not as simple as just, oh, I'll solve this particular question or equation and then, and then you know, you've got your solution there. It's really about drawing in a whole bunch of that knowledge from, from different aspects. I love Jimmy as well, how you talked earlier about the biomedical engineering student who needed, you know, a bit of the um, the fluid mechanics aspect and how that draws in. Um, so that's really something we want to highlight about the the various parts of the both master mechanical and mechatronics engineering and industrial. That's the sort of style of thing that we really want uh, our students to be able to take out once they've completed their masters. Um, I just wanted to bring that up because I I love hearing Lisa speak about this. I've heard Lisa speak about this before as well, so it's it's always brilliant. Um, and here we go. I've got. Uh, a question here that came through and they're asking about doing an internship at the um, second during the second year of the Bachelor of Science in specifically uh, which I can I can comment a bit but I might let Jimmy answer that and maybe just Jimmy if you want to talk about um, any internships at the master's level in general but um, yeah there are many uh, internships at the master's level for sure uh, there is specifically a subject called internship Literally, it's called internship. So you can work in a company and you can get uh, credits for that, actually. So that's a full internship and many students do it. People do it over the summer, typically, or over a semester, you can do a full internship subject. You can also do a capstone in an industry, which is, again, uh, 25 points worth over two semesters, which is also, it is not called an internship, but it is basically you're doing a project in the industry. So you have a supervisor in the industry and your supervisor in the academia. And you, you work with both of them together, but it is an industry driven, driven project. So those are the typical um, um, opportunities in the master's level. Undergraduate level, as I mentioned, the, the subject which we typically get uh, undergraduate level is the SECI, the, uh, the internship subject summer. It's a uh, the science project subject which gives students an opportunity to work in our labs. So these are third year BSc students, typically during summer or first semester, first semester or second semester, I think it's option open. I think there is a requirement of 70% or something for that subject, but it is, uh, it's at the discretion of the, of the supervisor. So you basically contact a person, uh, which lab you work. So let's say if you want to work with me, just directly write to me. And if I approve it, you are enrolled in that subject and you do a project for, there are no exams or anything. You project for six, six uh, for for one semester, and you have a report at the end, and, and that's it basically. Excellent. Thanks for that, Jimmy. Um, and in terms of how to get some direct advice on, you know, submitting an application for these, some of you uh, might be eligible to receive um, an offer automatically. We're trying our best to make that as streamlined as possible, but otherwise, um, you can always submit. Um, an application online. Um, if you go by your, your student portal, actually, there's a section there for applying for another course. So you, you can just, uh, there's an apply now button on, um, I guess, each of the uh, website pages. So, you know, from mechanical engineering, you can find that there. Actually, Jimmy, if you can jump forward one more slide as well. Um, there's that QR code there where you can book in uh, to speak one on one with a member of our team and they can, you know, go in a little bit more detail potentially about, you know, your. Uh, specific requirements or, or provide that extra information there. So thanks for the question, um, those who submitted it, and um, I hope that will help there. Um, Jimmy or Lisa, um, is there anything else either of you would like to say? I, I can talk, I, I do have another question I can ask, but I thought I'd uh, open it up to, to you two because you're both in, in the field. No, I don't have anything specific to add unless they have, there's a question. Yes, um, I think that's all. Maybe there's some questions. Cool. I'll just give another um, minute to see some of the other uh, guests, uh, students here, want to ask something specific. This is a great opportunity to, you know, ask Jimmy and, and Lisa some of these questions in uh, this sort of context. That being said, uh, as Jimmy mentioned, there is going to be a meetup this afternoon for um, some of the student clubs. So, would highly recommend getting involved in some of those. There. 
uh, kind of like this, but even, you know, that a little bit less formal, a, a really great chance to interact outside of strictly the classroom. And it really builds a lot of your, I guess, your employability longer term, as well as being a lot of fun to take part in, um, that you can be a part of those clubs. Um, and something else I just wanted to add is that uh, Jimmy did talk about the, you know, internship subjects. Uh, in our office, um, there's actually a team of four staff who work full time on helping our engineering and IT students um, getting internships and industry placement opportunities. Like we said, you can take them for credit. You're not limited to just that as well. You can take an extra one outside. They can be both paid and, and unpaid. We've got a list of you know different companies who we've worked with in the past and who want you know come to us to arrange ones. But as well as that, you know if you found this amazing company that you know you'll be keen on we can help support our students um on taking internships at those and it's really a, a very important part of our structure and, and will help you a lot long term but honestly everyone um it doesn't look like we've got any more questions at the moment so thank you everyone for attending today and joining it's been a pleasure listening to both jimmy and lisa talk a little bit there um, and if you haven't already, you know, you can go and join the engineering and IT community because we'll be running not just these sorts of deep dive events, but a few more of those, you know, less formal ones and, and some trip opportunities as well. But yeah, thank you everyone. And I'll stop the recording here. Thanks, Raul. Thanks, Lisa. Thank you, Raul.